Hello everybody. Today we're looking at a router with a difference. This is going to be a review of a PFSense self-build router, a router I built myself, based on the PC Engine's APU2 C4 board. Um, it's basically assembled by me and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the assembly process and I'm going to answer two questions. Is the APU2 C4 a good choice for a self-build PFSense router? And secondly, is PFSense a good alternative and a PFSense router a good alternative to buying an off-the-shelf router? What's the performance advantage or disadvantage? And how does it work? Um, and can someone like me build and configure a successful dual WAN router to replace the Tpli link router that I recently reviewed and that you can see in the background of this picture right now? Okay. Let's get on with it then. Oh, and in response to some comments I've had on my other videos about, as I'm British, why am I not drinking tea during my videos? Here is a cup of tea, and I am drinking it today, just to make you guys happy. So thanks for the feedback in the comments. You see, I do read them. So we'll whiz through the unboxing uh, and the assembly of the unit and then we'll have a look at PFSense in a slightly longer than usual video. I almost hit 20 minutes with this one. I do apologize. My rule is normally 10. But let's have a look to start with about why you might want to build your own router and why you might think PFSense is a good choice. And what I've done here is I've just typed very badly into this notepad uh, file here some comp comparisons. So here's a couple of routers I reviewed recently. The TP-Link TLER5120, a dual WAN router, has 128 megabytes of RAM, 8 megabytes of flash storage, and a dual core 500 megahertz CPU. It's 140 pounds, and it's a good router. The Zyxel VMG8924, another good router, 133 pounds, dual core 400 megahertz, and I couldn't find much else on the specs. And um, so top of the line ASUS router. The AC87U, £160 in the UK, 128 megabytes of RAM, sorry, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a dual core 1 gigahertz CPU. The PC Engine's board um, and configuration that I have is about £200, has 32 gigabyte SSD, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and a quad core 1 gigahertz Jaguar, gigahertz Jaguar processor. Um, so clearly, we're starting with a much more powerful hardware setup and for a similar price. All right, let's start by doing a very quick unboxing because there's not a great deal to it. This is the case you get with it. It's um, nicely manufactured, all metal, um, and I think purpose made for the APU boards. It doesn't have a huge amount of stuff on the outside, um, just a few little lights and things. This is the power supply. We'll pause and just have a look at this. One of the things about this device is supposed to be low power, okay. So 0.8 amps, two, oh sorry, 2000 milliamps, so 2 amps max at 12 volts. Okay, um, certainly going to be a lot lower power than an equivalent PC or PC. This piece of metal here is actually a heat spreader, as we'll find out when we come to do the build. It's uh, got adhesive on one side and has a polished side on the other. Okay, um, this is the board itself, very small. Okay, right, let's have a little pause here. So you've got three LAN ports two USB 3 ports, a power inlet, and that other thing there is not a VGA, it's actually a serial port. This thing has no graphics capability. In terms of I.O. on the board, it does have an SD card, which is bootable. Uh, as you saw, two external USB 3s. It's got an MSATA SSD slot, and it's also got two mini PCI Express, one with a SIM socket. Although it's a very simple build, um, you don't get a great deal of help and instruction, although there's a little bit on the manufacturer's website. This is me putting the heat spreader, which has obviously adheres on one side to the CPU, and then that blue stuff is actually a removable strip that will reveal the adhesive side that actually sticks to the case. And um, the board uses the metal case as a kind of passive heat um, heatsink, I guess you'd call it, 
So when you install this, um, it adheres to the case and um, transfers the heat from the CPU through the metal plate and onto the case through this uh, adhesive heat sink material. Okay, so you need to be a little bit careful when you're putting it together that you get this right first time because once you're stuck on, it's just going to become a pain if you haven't got it right. Now here I realize that I'm actually going to have to take the pins off the serial port in order to get it properly seated inside the case. So this is me doing that now. Obviously there is a proper tool for this job, I'm just not using it. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure I've got one somewhere, but, uh, oh well. Right, so now we should be able to get this properly seated inside the case. Uh, and hopefully the screw holes will line up, which they have. Okay, so now the plan is, I think, to use a little pack of screws to secure the main board uh, in position. Uh, it's a very easy build. If you can build a PC, you can certainly build one of these because it's got uh, basically all you do is screw the main board in, make sure the heat sink is in the right position, and then box it up, and you're basically done. A little bit fitty underneath it, that little lip at the front of the, the board, and I'm probably using far too big a screwdriver as well. But, you know, laziness will take precedence. Whilst I complete this build, let's talk about some of the positives and negatives of this uh, hardware. Because we're going to talk about the PFSense operating system or software after this. So I want to get this out of the way now. Basically, for the equivalent of a quality sort of top-end router... Um, you uh, you get hardware that is superior to most routers on the market, okay? Um, but it's not a cheap option to build your own uh, router using the PC Engine's board, this APU2C4. It is, however, an easy build. Uh, I like the nice conservative looks. It's very inconspicuous. Um, I went for the red box. You could get something even more conservative if you decided. This is me putting the mSATA SSD and as you can see I've got a 32 gigabyte one um, it's got three gigabyte LAN ports so you've got and obviously I need this uh, the dual WAN option but you could have a single WAN and two LAN ports if you like and they're all gigabit so which is great if you're building with a, an old PC or whatever you may find that you need to um, go out and find a network card or whatever to add an additional LAN port to it this is a very low power unit low power being an advantage in the long run the running cost of this will pay me back because a PC is going to be consuming, I would say, probably at least 10 times the amount of power. This is 6 to 12 watts in operation, so typically anywhere from 6 to 12 watts. I think 12 watts is the maximum, which is fantastic for a, for a low-power device with the power that it offers. Um, it's completely passive, as you've seen in the build, totally silent, and I can tell you that in operation it is slightly warm to the touch uh, the CPU temperatures operating in my case at around 52 53 degrees C and I've not seen them budge from that so I've got no concerns at all about CPU okay right uh, no rattles in there so great I think what we can do now is we can think about going on to installing PF sense on it okay there you can see the three little LED lights and obviously the back panel it all seems to fit together quite nicely. We're just going to stick on the rubber feet on the bottom. They go over these screw holes. Um, I don't think you've got a kit to rack mount this. So it's not really rack mountable that I can see. Um, but it's going to sit quite happily on these little feet. It doesn't get terribly hot anyway so I'm not too worried about it um, uh, from a point of view of stacking. But mine is going to be just rattling around freely amongst all the rubbish on my desk. So I'm not too worried about that. A little plug here to fill in a hole. I'm guessing maybe the case also fits the one of the other models, which maybe has some more inputs on it, just to fill those holes in there. But anyway, just for smartness, we'll stick those in. And I think we're pretty much done. Okay. 
Okay, that might be a beer moment there. Look away, children. Let's talk quickly about some downsides as well, though, before we move on. Um, first of all, no VGA. So you've got no VGA out. Basically, you're going to have to use a serial or null modem cable. And I bought one. Uh, you can get cheaper ones, but I would recommend this StarTech one. It's been very good. USB to null modem. Null modem cables themselves are not expensive, but you do need the right kind of serial port on your PC so you can talk to it. And you will need this as part of the installation. Okay, if you don't care about power usage, a cheap PC or an old PC would probably do as good a job as this. Just eat a lot of electricity along the way. But if you want to maybe have a practice or just a trial, do that. This is me logging into PFSense now. So um, we'll summarize at the end. But what you can see here is my dashboard. Um, and you can see how nice the interface is. It's got very professionally produced, even though it's free and freeware, obviously. A piece of software. To me, this is by far the finest interface that I have seen or used on a router. Um, and what you also know is that it's open source and it will continue to be supported for some time to come. You see it's uh, talking about my four CPUs. You saw my CPU temps there at 53 degrees C. 51 degrees C there. 52. Never mind. Um, CPU usage currently 13% and memory usage at 15 and I've never seen it go above 50% CPU. So uh, I certainly don't think this device is under any strain. You can see that I'm connected to two interfaces. Um, I have a Plus and a Zen WAN connection and a LAN connection to a switch on my desk. You can see that I've got the gateway set up and you can see I've got traffic graphs for both my WAN connections. So I can see when the load balancer splits a load between the two connections and how well it's doing. Um, underneath that, you can just see under the services, I've got some stuff running in there that we'll talk about later. Here's a little bandwidth test. Let's see if the dual WAN is working. Okay, so I need to be getting above 1.4 megabytes a second to have both my um, WAN connections in operation. Okay, you can see that Zen has now kicked in, and I'm now using all my bandwidth. I think there was up to 2.2 megabytes a second on that test there, just to show you that it does do the load balancing effectively. I have also set up failover. So if one of my connections goes down, it will transfer the load onto the other, and vice versa. It took a little while to work out how to figure that out, actually, to be honest. PFSense does offer some services and capabilities that you will rarely, if ever, find on other routers, and that do offer some advantages. Okay, um, Obviously, it can cope with multi-WAN, no problem. Um, it also has um, some interesting caching software. You can use Squid to cache your internet connection, which will speed things up and also offers you the opportunity to do your own web filtering um, using SquidGuard, which I haven't yet set up, but do intend to. I really like this facility that you're seeing here where you can actually use your DNS forwarding or DNS caching server to set up your own local DNS names for your servers and other things like that. So you don't have to go to IP addresses or other things like that. You could just type in um, the names of devices on your network. Here we're typing in the name of my router itself and it will just take you there. Okay, fantastic. I think that's pretty cool. The DNS caching also speeds up your connection. Now I'm not telling you that your internet is suddenly magically going to get 100% faster, but all of these small differences do make a difference overall in terms of the speed and responsiveness of your network and to users on your network, which I really like and I think is one of the other advantages of a PFSense configuration. Okay, so I'm never going to be able to tell you how to use PFSense or set it up. I'm the last person that should be giving you advice. It's taken me quite a lot of work to get this uh, working, okay? Um, but uh, what I can do is I can, if you're like me, if you're a bit of a geek, you like your gizmos and gadgets, and you're thinking about setting up a PFSense router, um, I can tell you a little bit about my experience and whether I think it was worth the effort. Okay, so start with PFSense itself, because um, the hardware, to some extent, is irrelevant. You've probably got four or five old PCs lying around your house that will do this job for you if you want. PFSense is awesome in terms of its configurability. It does have real measurable advantages and performance gains over 
most conventional routers that you can just go out and buy. It's free. You'll get regular updates for more than the life of your device because it's open source software, it's regularly updated. Okay, you're going to find loads of support online, loads of forums, loads of people using it, and the general people in the open source community are so helpful, aren't they? They're brilliant. Okay, so you could do all sorts of cool stuff like DNS caching, like using Squid, like um, being cl doing clever things with your DHCP server. It can use multi WAN configurations. Okay, and you can run it on just about anything. It has this really rock solid FreeBSD OS base. My TP Link dual WAN router at the moment needs a reboot every two days. The, I switched this PFSense router on, installed PFSense on it, and it's run for five days. And all I've done is configure it, and I've had not one crash. So brilliant. Okay, things you need to watch out for, though. This is not plug and play. If you're not already into your IT networking and a bit of a geek, I would not recommend that you get a PFSense router. Get an old PC and have a play with it if you want. Okay, but don't rely on it as your main router until you've built up confidence probably better to go out and buy a really good off-the-shelf router with the best performance that you can find and you'll find reviews of those on my channel and other people's channels as well setting this up takes a while it's taken me I'd say the best part of a week to start to understand the subtleties of it and really get there I would say basically it's for geeks only so awesome but for geeks non geeks go and buy yourself a really good off-the-shelf router and read the reviews in terms of the PC Engine's APU2C4, is it worth it? Okay, well, it's quite an expensive piece of hardware, but it's classy, it's nice looking, it's an easy build, it's totally silent, it's cool, and it works great on the PFSense router. Yes, it's less powerful than the equivalent or decent PC. Potentially, you've got something lying in the corner that's more powerful, but probably more powerful than you need. The APU2C4 is way more powerful than I need for my router needs, and it sips power, so I'm very happy with it. Overall, I think this is a great project for someone that's into that kind of stuff, but it's not mainstream yet, not by a long shot in my opinion.